hello, I'm Ken Burrell from Pragmatic PMO. This is one of a series of videos expanding on the Success Stories Shared initiative that was started in South Africa by Linky van der Merwe of Virtual Project Consulting and Louise Worsley of PyCubed, and which has their enthusiastic support. Aldous Huxley said that men do not learn very much from the lessons of history is one of the most important of all the lessons of history. Project management research has shown that project managers prefer to learn by face-to-face -face interaction rather than by searching through lessons learned databases. I think that project managers can learn a lot from each other's success stories and also from sharing their scars. So, as part of my campaign for real project managers, on your behalf I'm talking to some real project managers I've had the pleasure of working alongside so that you can benefit from their experience. Today I'm delighted to have with me Nicole Riley who's going to share some of her experiences with us. Hi Nicole, um, can you start by introducing yourself and giving us a flavour of your background and how you got into project management? Yeah, about 25 years worth of workplace experience and it's roughly about half and half now, as in operational and then moving into the, the change side of things. So most of the stuff I did while I was on the operational side of things was business analysis and data analysis and I never really thought about it at the time but some classic project management stuff in there as well. And now I primarily work in PMO. Um, lots of it is probably around the program space, although I do also manage some portfolio management offices. So can you give us a feel for the kind of projects that you've been involved with? Most of the project management experience I would probably talk about would be back in the day when I worked in publishing print publishing, right. so news trade, stuff that was sold in shops. Okay, so can you give us an example of a scar? So something went wrong on a project that you were running um, and what you learned from it? There was a really big trend for cover mounting gifts right. at that particular point in time and publishers got really competitive with each other and typically as a circulation manager you were told about something rather than consulted about something. Okay. So we had this particular publisher who informed us very late in the day that he had an offer from a cereal company okay. to cover mount some cereal onto his particular publication. We never saw the product. What we had to do was get the copies of the magazine to an outworker to actually attach this serial to the magazine. Right. So it was only once we had got the printed copies to the outworker who had had the cover mount delivered separately that we realised we had wrongly assumed that it was going to be something like you get in a hotel where you get a packet of yep. cereal and you would stick it on the front. No. It was a full-sized box of cereal. A family-sized box? Yes. Right. So we weren't cover mounting the cereal onto the magazine. We were effectively <laughs> cover mounting the magazine onto the cereal. <laughs> okay. So if initially the phone calls from the outworker saying we don't have the equipment to do this automatically we're going to have to do it manually we're going to have to bring more people in to do it it's going to take longer bearing in mind this was a fortnightly publication and we were already on tight time scales because of editorial and advertising Straight away, it's well, how quickly can we do this? And in the, in the realms of time, cost, quality, time was pretty fixed. Yeah. So, cost went and quality, best we could do, sort of thing. So, eventually, we managed to get the copies to store with the challenges around lorries that are booked for a certain weight and a certain capacity to move the copies having to work all around that and basically make changes on the fly and the one thing we'd forgotten was that shelf space in retail is geared towards 
a magazine. Which is flat and thin. Flat and thin and a certain amount of pages. And when you have a box of cereal mounted to your magazine, you're lucky if you can get one copy on the shelf, let alone several copies. So at best, we had one copy on the shelf. As soon as that one copy was bought, we were off sale for the rest yeah. of the day. So we'd already gone on sale late, so we had a reduced window for people to buy the copies. We then couldn't really display more than one at a time, if any, and magazines are typically sale or return. So any that you don't sell, the retailer sends back. So we had an enormous amount of copies back as a result of that. So, so what did you learn from that? What would you recommend to others that they do as a result? I mean, number one was about the communication side of things and using the subject matter experts that were actually available. If, if a publisher, had, if he just phoned up and said, I've had this offer from this company and given us product description, exactly what it was, rather than leaving us to assume. We could have used all of the various different subject matter experts that we had in the business to say, how is this going to affect distribution? How is this going to affect timelines? Can retailers handle it? Can we maybe not do this as a sale or return product? Can we say perhaps it's a firm sale product? I mean, mixing print and food items is pretty much a no, don't go there anyway. Because one of the major things we had when we took all the copies back was that we, we had to strip them all apart again because all of our waste arrangements were around paper, not food. Right. So we already incurred the cost of cover mounting it and then we had to incur almost the same costs of separating them. Okay, so how about a success story then? Something that you habitually do on projects that you believe leads to, to success that you would recommend to others to do? You can never have too much communication in your plan. And one of the particular projects that I remember working on, when we delivered the project right at the end, we had feedback about how it had been one of the best managed projects that people had seen in that organisation and I honestly believe it was because throughout the delivery we stuck to a schedule of communicating using a certain template and we were pretty much the same day at the same time every week sending out a communication to say this is what we've achieved this week this is what we've got planned over the next few weeks. Don't forget, you need to be ready for our launch on target date. Uh, don't forget to complete your training. And just that constant communication and contact meant that they didn't feel like the project was suddenly dumped on them. There wasn't suddenly a go live date and every, someone had to do something they'd had their expectations managed throughout. So consistent, so, timely definitely. communication. Think, put yourself in the position of the, the person who's having the change. Done to them. Yes. And what you would like, and having those expectations managed in such a structured way, I'm sure meant less resistance at the point where we did make it live and people had teething problems and it wasn't it wasn't so much of a curve as it, it flattened the curve in terms of the change. <laughs> Nicole, thanks for your honesty and your insights. So we've heard today from Nicole about something that went wrong, how she recovered from it, and also about things that she does on projects that contribute to success. Anton Chekhov said, knowledge is of no value unless you put it into practice. 
I believe the value of learning comes not just from documenting the past, but from changing what we do in the future. So my challenge to you is what can you learn from this? What will you do differently in your projects as a result of Nicole's experience? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and found it stimulating, please leave a comment or a like or both, or share it with others on social media. If you think these videos are useful and interesting, I'll make more of them. If you want to appear in one, let me know. For other videos on project management topics, take a look at my video channel. For articles on project management and PMO topics, visit my website, pragmaticpmo.com, or follow me on Twitter, at pragmaticpmo. To connect with me more personally, search LinkedIn for Ken Burrell, Pragmatic PMO. In the meantime, until the next time, thanks for watching.